So Hillary Clinton um, lectured the left on how to win. This is not The Onion. This is dead serious. She released that masterclass thing, where, which is basically like a QVC infomercial for herself. And in it, she read the um, speech she would have given had she won. She was crying throughout it. Crystal and I talked about that on Crystal Kyle and Friends. I think the clip's up on YouTube. Um, but she also said, listen, Democrats win when we win in places we don't normally win. And in order to win in these places... You can't have, like, pure Democrats. You need, you know, ones who are blue dogish and like Joe Manchin. And uh, it's just a ironclad fact of reality. So then you had Claire McCaskill go on MSNBC, back up Hillary Clinton. Let's watch this. And then I'm going to rip their argument to shreds because even the fact that they're talking about this is the height of irony. I suspect you can relate to some of those comments, having to want, run and win in exactly the kind of place she's talking about. Hard places for Democrats to win. I think she's also obliquely referring to people like Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin. You say, well, you can criticize Joe Manchin all you want, but if he doesn't win in West Virginia, then we don't have the Senate. Yeah, you know, Hillary Clinton pointing this out is really, really a big deal. And I hope that the progressive wing of my party takes it to heart. The power comes from a majority. The majority comes from the middle because we're not talking about places that are bright blue. We're talking about places where they do care whether or not parents feel like they have any control over their child's school. Forget about what specifically they're teaching. It's about understanding that in these times parents and a lot of these parents in the suburbs women mothers in the suburbs came to joe biden because he was the candidate of the middle not that he was the candidate of the extreme and if we don't get that if we spend all our time talking about the things that bright blue places want to focus on and not on the things that moderates want to hear we are not going to hold the majority and Mitch McConnell and either Speaker Donald Trump or Speaker Kevin McCarthy uh, will completely blow up the last two years of Biden administration. And the things we really care about could really go by the wayside. God forbid that Donald Trump get reelected to another term as president. So they're already using the fear of Trump to say, shut up, fall in line and vote for Democrats. That'll do absolutely nothing. But let's talk about how hilarious this is. Claire McCaskill lost in Missouri to Josh Hawley. She's a Democrat, she was in office, and then she lost. And she's lecturing on how to win. Well, as David Dole, the Humanist Report, said, hey, Claire, why don't you go talk to Katie Porter, who is in a swing district, and she ran on the left and won. Why don't you go talk to Sherrod Brown, who's in Ohio, a place where Republicans are dominating, and he won. And he won not being a centrist, corporatist, corrupt goon. He won by being more on the left. Why don't you go talk to Joe Donnelly, blue dog Democrat, who lost the same time Sherrod Brown won in the state right next door. And he ran on like, I'm like Ronald Reagan. He was trying to be Joe Manchin on steroids, and he lost. So Claire McCaskill, who just lost to Josh Hawley, so she's a loser, a loser, and Hillary Clinton, who just lost to Donald Trump, she's a loser, are lecturing the left on how to win. Did you know, in the last election, every Democrat who ran on Medicare for All won. Every Democrat who ran on Medicare for All won. I wanna, let me say that one more time, because I'm not sure that's landing with a lot of people. Every single Democrat who ran on Medicare for All won. The other thing that's hilarious about this is, she's saying, hey, here's the things we have to do to win. And all those things, shockingly, are centrist, moderate, really corporate bullshit, right? Joe Biden is doing those things. The Democratic Party is doing those things. And right now, they're, depending on what poll you look at, either like two or three points down in the, in the uh, generic ballot, or they're 10 points down. And by the way, they need to win by like five points just to keep the numbers they have. So even if, they're, even if there's some polls where they're tied, that's still them being down because of the gerrymandering and the Republicans having a built-in advantage. So, Claire, they're doing the exact thing you and Hillary Clinton want, and they're getting their asses handed to them on a silver platter. If you were correct in your theory, then right now Biden would be at a 50% or 55% approval rating.
and the Democrats would be plus five, at least in the, in the generic ballot. They're not because you're wrong and you've always been wrong. And they're bringing up the whole thing about like, all oh, teachers in the classroom and what happened in Virginia. What happened in Virginia is that um, Terry McAuliffe is more boring than watching paint dry. He has negative charisma. And all he did was run on Trump bad. That's it. Yes, he followed Glenn Youngkin down the culture war path, which is a mess, and he shouldn't have done that. But he also just ran on Trump bad. His, his ads were about Donald Trump. And ironically, at the end of her segment here, what does she do? She whips up the Trump fear again and does the same thing McAuliffe did that led to him losing. Guys, I don't know how to say this any more clearly. These people stand for nothing. These people believe in nothing. They believe in getting themselves back into power, and that's it. And then I love how she says, look, if, if the Republicans win and Mitch McConnell has control, then we're really going to uh, not be able to get any of the things we care about. We're not able to get any of the things we care about because of you and Hillary Clinton and Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. You are the ones who are blocking us. You are. You're the problem. We had the Democrats have the House. The Democrats have the Senate. The Democrats have the White House. And we're not getting universal child care. We're not getting universal pre-K. We're not getting expanded Medicare. We're not getting all drug prices lowered and said they did a compromise of like, well, we'll lower 10 of them by 2025 or some shit. You're the problem. Look in the mirror. And that's the thing, Claire. I don't, you don't have the same values and policy beliefs that I do. Stop pretending like you're an ally who means well. You're not. You're corrupt. You're corporate. You serve industry. You serve corporations. And every now and then you sprinkle in a touch of like social change and you're like, I don't despise gay people. And you expect people on the left to say, queen, you're such a queen. You're such a queen. Listen, what do I care about? I care about Medicare for all. I care about unionization and the PRO Act. I care about a $15 minimum wage. I care about ending the wars beyond Afghanistan. I care about ending Iraq. I care about getting out of Syria. I care about all that stuff. These things really matter. These things are important. Don't pretend like, oh, I'm with you, but we can't do that. No, you're not even with me. You're not even with us. You're with Hillary. You are dyed-in-the-wool, neoliberal corporate hack. That's what you are. And again, I don't know how to say it any more clearly. You lost to Josh Hawley. You're a loser. Taking advice on how to win from you is like taking advice on morality from Adolf Hitler. Okay? I don't want to hear it. You're literally the last people we should be listening to. Hillary Clinton is the last person we should listen to on how to win. She lost the most layup election of all time. Homeboy was caught on tape saying, I grab him by the pussy, I don't even wait, like seven and a half minutes before the election, and Hillary still lost. She still lost. So, whatever you say as the advice, the opposite is true. The opposite is what we should do. When were Joe Biden's approval ratings the highest? When he cut a check to people. He sent them free money in a COVID relief bill. That's when his approval rating was the highest. His approval rating was the highest when he did a a plethora of executive orders that reversed all of Trump's executive orders. That's when he was polling the highest. So in other words, when he was his most progressive is when he was polling his highest. When he was his most progressive is when he was polling his highest. That's not an opinion. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. But again, build back better. Go look at the bill. Every left provision that the left cares about polls incredibly well. Incredibly well. So what's your answer to that? You have no response to that. You have no response to that. If your theory was correct, since now Joe Biden has fully become the do-nothing corporate neoliberal Democrat that he is, if you were correct, right now he would be polling at 50 or 55%, the country would love him, and Democrats would be up in the generic ballot. That's not the case. Because you're wrong. Joe Biden were to come out tomorrow and sign an executive order legalizing marijuana and sign an executive order abolishing student loan debt, his approval rating would spike at least five points, probably more than that. And that also would totally obliterate your case. But I'm sure you'd be right back out on TV lecturing and wagging your finger and saying, no, this is what you have to do to win. The opposite of what you just did, which made you more popular. You lost to Josh Hawley, a prep school prick fake populist. I don't want to hear it. Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump. The saddest loss of all time. The easiest election to win. She lost. So, this is a conventional wisdom spewing center on MSNBC. And the conventional wisdom, as per usual, is dead wrong. 
If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.